Channel 2 investigates a skydiving death that we've been covering since the weekend. A seasoned jumper killed when his parachute collided with another jumper chute. 64 year old Randy Shell did that jump with Skydive Spaceland in Rocheron. Investigator Joel Eisenbaum has been digging into that company's history. He's live in Rocheron with what he found. Joel? Dominique, I'll tell you what, when you first hear that a skydiving outfit has had nine fatal accidents, it's kind of shocking to hear. But you got to put it in context. You wonder over what period of time is that? What is the industry standard for fatalities in skydiving accidents? Those are the answers we're uncovering tonight. On a busy day, this plane will take off 20 times and deposit nearly 400 skydivers up to 14,000 feet above a 130-acre property in rural Brazoria County. Since 2000, Skydive Spaceland Houston appears to have repeated this practice without anyone getting killed. 99.999925% of the time. And that statistic is almost exactly the same as the nationwide skydiving fatality figure in 2016. Still nine deaths and about 1.2 million dives is troubling for those nine and their families. He was very active and always wanted to be uh, doing. He was not good at sitting, didn't enjoy that at all. Randy Schell, the Houston voiceover professional who died Saturday, was a seasoned skydiver who may have opened his chute too close to another skydiver, causing a violent mid-air collision. The last death at Skydive Spaceland Houston was in 2013. A skydiver's parachute failed. In 2008, a skydiver failed to open his parachute. A lawsuit alleged that 58-year-old man wasn't properly trained here. That case was settled out of court. Right now, about one in every 153,000 skydive jumps leads to a skydiving accident, a fatality. That's still some risk, no doubt, but the industry is a lot safer than it was just 10 years ago. We're live in Rocheron, Brazoria County tonight. I'm Joel Eisenbaum, KPRC Channel 2 News.